Does diplomacy matter? Or are presidential trips, diplomatic visits, and international summit meetings nothing more than pomp and circumstance, signifying nothing? I'm Jim Lindsay, and this is Lessons Learned. Our topic today is President Richard Nixon's trip to mainland China, which began on February 21st, 1972. In a world in which Americans get their iPods and their iPads from China, and the Chinese government regularly buys U.S. Treasury notes, allowing Washington to run a trillion dollar deficit, it may be hard to imagine that a single presidential trip could be labeled as a week that changed the world. But that's exactly what Richard Nixon's trip to China did in 1972. U.S. relations with China have been frozen since the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1949, when the Communist Chinese came to power and pushed the Nationalist government out to Taiwan. In November 1950, Chinese troops had crossed the Yalu, turning what looked to be an American victory in the Korean War into a bitter stalemate. Relations between the United States and China were so cold over the next two decades that when an American table tennis team visited China in April 1971, it was front page news around the world. Now, it was a surprise that Richard Nixon would be the president to make an opening to China. After all, Nixon had made his name as a politician by being a staunch anti-communist. He had often railed against so-called Red China and had argued that recognizing China would be disastrous for the cause of freedom. But as president, Richard Nixon saw three benefits to reaching out to China. First, it would drive a wedge in relations between China and the Soviet Union, potentially giving the United States more leverage in dealing with Moscow. Second, Nixon hoped that by reaching out to China, the Chinese would in turn put pressure on the North Vietnamese to reduce their presence and pressure on South Vietnam. And third, Nixon believed that reaching out to China would recognize what everyone already knew, which is that communist China was here to stay. If we can find the common ground on which we can both stand, where we can build the bridge between us and build the new world, generations in the years ahead will look back and thank us for this meeting that we have held in this past week. Nixon's eight-day visit to China was a remarkable political success. He did not reestablish formal relations with China. That would come seven years later under President Jimmy Carter. But by going to China in February of 1972, Richard Nixon put the relations between the two countries on an entirely new, different, and much more positive track. So what is the lesson of Richard Nixon's trip to China for foreign policy events today? Just this, diplomacy matters. History is usually told as a story of epic battles and courageous last stands. But history is written just as much by wars that are averted, by treaties that are signed, and agreements that are forged. If you think about American foreign policy and its success, much of it is going to depend upon the quality and efficacy of American diplomacy. Just think of the U.S. relationship with China more than three decades after Nixon's visit. China has emerged as a global power. The United States has to find a way to recognize the emergence of China while still protecting and advancing American values and American interests. Or consider the current confrontation with Iran over Tehran's nuclear program, the success of American efforts to pressure the Iranians to stand out from the program is going to depend upon the success of the United States in building, maintaining, and sustaining international pressure on Tehran. Or consider the efforts by the United States to help bring Burma back into the international community after decades of isolation, an effort that is seeking to promote human rights, democracy, and the rule of law in Burma. I invite you to continue this conversation about how diplomacy matters on my blog, The Water's Edge. You can find it at CFR.org. I'm Jim Lindsay, and thanks for watching this installment of Lessons Learned.